Hi guys, my name is Peter Lance. Um, I'm a technical game artist in training, and I just kind of wanted to share a creation I just made for a project called Air Current. Um, it's basically a procedural falling animation, um, which is done by blending a great many animations together. Let me start by just showing you what it's all about. So here I have a character that you can play as in the game. She can run around, um, jump, etc. Um, but something special that she's capable of doing is she can fall in any direction and look good while doing it. So if I fall sideways, she kind of moves her arms a little bit, her legs, I feel like she's moving kind of with the wind. She jumps backwards, she kind of spreads her limbs out forward, kind of does like a forward fall thing. Um, and when she jumps upwards, she kind of like points herself in the air, then kind of falls down in a much more natural position. Whoosh, just like that. Um, and this can happen when the character's at any rotation. Um, for example, if I flip her up in the air, she just falls naturally. Um, another feature is if you spin the character, she'll like react by like tucking her arms in or put yourself in a back flip pose or a front flip pose like so and um all the movement looks natural somewhat I don't think it's perfect but I think it's much better than what you would see in an average game um, it all looks like an animation that's being played, but in reality it's a bunch of still positions all just being blended together based on the character's velocity, rotation, and angular velocity, which is how fast something is spinning around. Um, if you're watching this and maybe you're wondering how someone would pull this off. Um, maybe you want to put it in your own game. Um, I kind of just give a glimpse at the blueprints, so you kind of know the theory. Um, it would take a great deal of explaining to show you how it all works, but let's start with the animations I'm using. So um, here's my little animation scene where I've been animating my character um, you're seeing a robot here because he uses the same skeleton. We can use her instead. Um, if you can see it, if you look at the timeline, these are all just different poses for the character. One's for her falling up, one for falling forward, backward, sideways, sideways again, um, down, and then, um, I started bringing in positions for her. Actually, this one's for when she's not doing anything in the air. Then I started um, bringing in poses for when she's like doing different kinds of spins. So if she's doing like a a cartwheel type spin, she does this. Kind of like when you're spinning around your yaw. That's the kind of spin you make. So both directions here. And then if you're doing a, uh, a front flip, have a little tucking position, back flip, a uh, back flip position. And um, when I figure out how the character should look when doing all these different spins and falls, um, first I calculate um, how the falling should look. Um, it's semi-in-depth how that works 
it's not terrible though if you're an unreal veteran type person who's been using it for maybe like a year or two where it gets kind of crazy and this took me a lot of trial and error is when you start blending in after the fall animation um, anything that kind of reacts to the character's angular velocity like doing the spins um, so the, the probably the most important thing I did to kind of help you get started is I converted the character's angular velocity, which you call rotation speed, to local space. Um, basically by turning the rotation speed, which I'm storing as a rotator, turning it into a vector, and using this node called inverse transform direction to um, transform that rotation speed to the character's local space so that when she's spinning like let's say she's standing like let's say she's falling diagonal diagonally pointing that direction like kind of like a bullet like spinning through the air um, she needs to kind of tuck in her arms like she's spinning um, not just when her overall yaw is spinning in a world rotation. I don't know if that made any sense. It's important to convert the angular velocity to local space. And this is how you do it. Took me a long time to figure it out, so this will save you some time. Um, the rest was just a matter of how I blended everything together. Anyway, um, that's about it. Thanks for listening, guys.